Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 21 of the design patterns tutorial. In this session, we will discuss what is facade design pattern, implementation guidelines of facade design pattern, and we'll take a look at a simple example to implement this pattern. Please refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. As per the Gang of Four definition, facade pattern states that we need to provide a unified interface to a set of interfaces in a subsystem. Facade defines a higher level interface that make the subsystems easier to use. This pattern falls under the category of structural design pattern. The term facade is derived from French facade, which means frontage or face. A facade is generally referred to the exterior appearance of the things, and it could be a building or any other form of representation. Now, to elaborate this, we can say that facade design pattern provides abstracted view of subsystems by hiding its complexity. It wraps the complex subsystems with a simple interface. This interface is responsible for calling functions of existing subsystems. Let's now take a look at the implementation guidelines of this pattern. We need to use the facade pattern when we want to provide a simple interface to a complex subsystems. Subsystems often get more complex as they evolve. Most patterns that we learn till now when we apply them result in more and more smaller classes. This makes the subsystem more usable and easier to customize. But it also becomes harder to use for clients that don't need to customize. A facade can provide a simple default view of the subsystem that is good enough for most clients. Also, we need to use this pattern when there are many dependencies between clients and the implementation classes of an abstraction. In this scenario, we introduce a facade to decouple the subsystem from clients and other subsystems, thereby promoting subsystem independence and portability. We do need to use this design pattern when we want to layer the subsystems and use a facade to define an entry point to each of these subsystem level. To this point, if the subsystems are dependent, then you can simplify the dependencies between them by making them communicate with each other solely through their facades. Let's now take a look at the representation diagram of facade design pattern. Notice that there are many subsystems interacting with each other and each of them having their own implementations. You may be wondering why we end up in this complex subsystems. To answer that, we create subsystems by following design patterns and principles to structure a system into subsystems which helps reduce complexity. Till now, we have discussed and understood that a lot of design patterns which helps us develop large scale systems depending on the requirement. After a lot of these smaller capable systems, when we envision and expect clients to invoke these subsystems, it becomes a tedious process. Hence, the common design goal is to minimize the communication and dependencies between subsystems. One way to achieve this is to introduce a facade object that provides a single, simplified interface to more general facilities of a subsystem. And then clients will interact with this facade object to get their expected method written details. Hence, we can say that facade knows which system or which subsystem classes are responsible for a request and it delegates those clients request to appropriate subsystem objects whereas the subsystem classes implement their subsystem functionality to handle work assigned by the facade object these subsystems have no knowledge of the facade that is they don't keep any references to the facade object but they serve all the requests which are requested by the facade object. Now the clients over here communicate with the subsystem by sending the request to the facade, which internally forwards them to the appropriate subsystems objects. Although the subsystem objects performs the actual work, the facade may have to do the work of its own to translate its interface to subsystem interfaces. And the clients that use the facade don't have to access it its subsystem objects directly. I'm sure at this moment you're still wondering that there are many other design patterns that can be used as a replacement for facade design pattern. 
and of course you want to know more about those comparisons. We will certainly dedicate separate sessions on discussing those comparison of design patterns and their usage guidelines in our upcoming sessions. For now, let's focus on the facade pattern and see how we can implement this with a simple example. Let's now switch to the Visual Studio Console application program and see this in action. To make the things faster, I have taken a simple shopping cart example to demonstrate this pattern. I have already created a class library called shopping cart which has the interface, implementation and model objects. Most of us are familiar with any e-commerce applications. In any e-commerce portals, we search for an item that we are looking for and add those items to the cart and then we place the order to get our product items. This is a very high level representation of an e-commerce application. However, internally there are many subsystems which are responsible to make purchases on e-commerce platform. Let's say for example, we have five subsystems which are cart, order, etc. subsystems that are responsible to create any online orders. For the representational purpose, I have created these five subsystems as interfaces which are iCart, iTax, iOrder, iWallet and iAddress. I have also created those respective models to interact with these interfaces which are address, cart, cart item and product. Let's say the iCart interface or the cart subsystem need to follow some steps before adding an item to the cart. For example, the cart need to get the item details first and then check the availability of the item and once it is available, we log the items in stock and then once all of these operations are complete, then this subsystem is responsible to add the items to the cart. However, the end clients doesn't expect these methods to be invoked and they need a simplified version of a method which perform these operations. Once the items are added to the cart, we need to invoke the tax subsystem so that it gets the tax by state and apply the tax on those items before deriving the final price of those items. And once this step is complete, the next step is to assign the address to the cart and verify if the user has enough balance to purchase and proceed with the purchase of the order. As I stated earlier, we all know that the end clients doesn't care about these details and they are only bothered about creating the cart and placing the order. I hope now you are able to correlate and understand that we need to create one more layer or a facade that serves the requests of the clients. In order to achieve that, I have created a shopping facade library where the end users are presented with only two methods which are add to cart and place order. I have also done this implementation in this user order which inherits the I user order. Let's now switch to the main program which is our own client and see how the client is invoking the facade layer. Let's expand this facade demo and switch to the main program. Notice that we are creating a user order and we are adding items to the cart by passing the item ID and the required quantity. Once it is added to the cart, the next step of the client to, is to place the order. Now let's switch to the add to cart method and see what are the operations that add to cart is performing. Let me switch to the user order. Notice that in step one, we are invoking the cart subsystem details, which internally invokes the get item details method. And once we have those item details, we are also checking the item availability. Depending on the item availability and once the step 2 is passed, we are locking the item in the store and then we are proceeding by adding the item to the user's cart. Once these operations are completed, internally the add to cart is going to return the cart ID to the end client and then the end client invokes the place order method. Similar to the add to cart method, the place order method abstracts all the subsystem methods and places the order by performing taxation rules, verifying the user balance or the user valid balance and it also checks if the user valid balance is greater than cart price 
then it proceeds by assigning the address details of the current user and then once all of these criteria are accomplished the user's order are placed and the order id which is returned from this place order detail is returned to the end client a point to note here is that i'm just representing all these methods at a high level to show the complexity of these subsystems of course i have not implemented these methods in detail except that i'm printing the details of these methods invoked in each of these subsystems using console.write line as you all know our idea is to un just understand the facade implementation and not to focus on the real implementation of these subsystems now let's run this application and see the output notice that in the output client invokes the facade methods of add to cart and place order details which internally calls many subsystem methods to achieve this functionality i hope now you are very much familiar with the facade design pattern also i would like to mention that this sample code is available in our blog site for your reference in the next session we will discuss another structural design pattern till then thank you for listening and have a great day